begin with breaking news. American financial markets are spiraling. The Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the Nasdaq are having their worst day since September 2022. Polls show a big majority. I told y'all what was coming these last five months are going to be drastic. I told y'all. I told y'all. This ain't even, this, this is only part of the five month thing that's going to happen. And this, this stock market is going to completely go to um, great, uh, it's going to go to, um, what's the word, um, great depression style stock market. Watch. It's, it's soft now, and they're going to be like, well, we don't see much. It's, I mean, we see it going down, but it's still, we're still okay. In another month, they're going to be like, oh, my is today God. today Monday? Today is Monday. Okay. majority of voters say the economy is bad for them. They feel it. Critics say Vice President Kamala Harris will have to answer for yet another crisis as she tries to convince the nation she can actually fix the border, violent crime, high inflated prices on everything. And now the latest crisis, our stock market is in deep trouble. I'm Harris Faulkner. You are in the Faulkner Focus. Major fears at this hour that we are barreling toward a recession. Here's a big warning sign. Last week's hugely disappointing July jobs report. Let's take a look now. And of course, in the foreground of all of this is what we're dealing with today. In the back rear view mirror, part of how we got here. Just 114,000 jobs added in July. That number is far below what we needed and far below what the Biden-Harris administration estimated of 175,000. Now, they've been boasting about jobs. We'll get into that. But right now, we are almost back where we started with them. Mm. This is bad. The unemployment rate also surged to 4.3 percent. And that rise is raising the specter of the SOM rule, which has accurately forecast every recession since the 1970s. Famed economist Claudia Somme herself is now weighing in. The SOM rule in uh, force at this moment. Mm. It triggered. And if, if workers don't have paychecks, they can't spend. And then it that that's the momentum that that's gets right. going so it's you know there's it's oh it's the volume is turned up louder than usual on the psalm rule right. so i don't look at this and big picture say we are in a recession but i look at this and i say we right. we're right. not in a good we're not headed in a good direction Damien, get, well, just careful how it works so with all the political ads right. and and claims of big money raised on the left this is on their watch and kamala harris wants to lead the march from the White House. One Republican strategist says VP Harris cannot avoid this topic or her administration's record. The conditions in the country hasn't changed. They changed out their nominee, but they haven't changed out the inflation. They haven't changed that's out right. the economic anxiety that most that's working right. families are facing. And that's something she's still gonna have to do deal with because she's not an independent actor. She didn't land here, you know, six weeks ago on a spaceship and said, hey, I'll take over. She's been sitting right next to Joe Biden the whole for the time. last four years. Well, it's worse Doing than nothing. that because Joe Biden for the last three and a half, four years has been saying that Kamala Harris is always the last person in the room on all the big decisions that affect America. Wow. So she owns it. Fox Business's Hillary Vaughn is at the White House. Hillary, this is a tough spot for American workers to be in today. Harris, it's a really tough spot, and it doesn't seem like the Harris campaign is interested in turning around the way things are going, the direction that they're going in. This is the wow. worst jobs report that this administration has seen since 2021, the first year that Biden and Harris moved into the White House, backtracking progress that the Harris campaign has been the bragging about on the campaign trail to voters. They want to own their economic wins, down. but they want to blame the economic. Why does he look like the bad kid? Like he is in time out. Shame. That's shame. That's the face of shame. You stand in the corner now, Joe. That's the face of shame. Like I know that this is, you know, look at that face. That's guilt. I just pulled it. No, face. that's a that's an admission of guilt. Like why? What are we doing up here? My thing is this woman oh, sat on gosh. the sideline. I really believe that this woman was picked as a, a diversity hire, and um. She did most of nothing. He says she sat in the room, but I don't trust this woman making decisions or the decisions that have made that have devastated the country. I do trust she might have been a part of those and going taking stuff down because how, how radical this woman is. 
economic bad on their predecessor. The Harris campaign spokesperson trying to distract from this poor report talking about former President Trump's record saying, quote, Donald Trump failed Americans as president, costing our economy millions of jobs and bringing us to the brink of recession. But we might be on the brink of a recession now under Harris's leadership. Economists at Goldman Sachs think a recession is more likely than it was before, raising the likelihood from 15 to 25 percent that we will head into a recession. But Democrats are not doubting their policies. They are confident that they need to keep doing what they have been doing. Is there anything the administration is going to do differently now to work on it? I mean, you know, we, it, it's not a change in course, but it is a, you know, continued commitment to the course that we've been on. Are we in a recession? We're definitely not in a recession. But today, Trump's vice presidential pick, Senator J.D. Vance, is calling out Kamala Harris for not showing up today and calming economic fears, posting, quote, this moment could set off a real economic calamity around the globe. It requires steady leadership, the kind President Trump delivered for four years. Kamala Harris is too afraid to answer media questions and cannot lead us in these troubled times. Hashtag where's Kamala and Harris. It's important, important to point out that up until this point, the Biden-Harris team had been so confident in how they handled the economy that they named essentially the Biden's economic policies, Bidenomics. They used his name. It'll be interesting to see if Harris continues to use that phrase Bidenomics on the trail because it doesn't seem like she's going to offer any new economic policy. She's certainly not going to do a 180. Well, Harris. it's so interesting mm -hmm. that you say mm -hmm. that because as time went on before Biden dropped out of the race, even he had stopped using Bidenomics. Right. Because they poll tested that just as everybody has and they know that it wasn't working for them. But she has continued. I haven't seen her recently. Maybe she'll also stop using that word. Uh, great to get the fir uh, first report from you, Hillary. Thank you very much. New Fox polling shows the economy is by far the most important thing to voters right now in four key battleground states, Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, and, and Pennsylvania, a state in which both candidates, Trump and Kamala Harris, have been spending some time in, mainly Trump at this point because obviously he's been running longer. And he knows where the, the, the problem areas are in the economy and can hit those hard when he's on the ground. We'll see right. how she can do it. Right. The issue is so important, in fact, it basically doubles their second pick, immigration. So immigration we know is huge. The economy now, especially on a day, -to -day like today, reigns supreme among voters. Another recent national poll shows only one in four voters say they feel that our economy is excellent or in good condition. That leaves 75% wow. of American voters, no matter what their party, who are unhappy with the way things currently are in the economy. Right. And when it comes to the presumptive November matchup, a new Wall Street Journal Street report, a Wall Street Journal report shows voters I'm not even going to lie to you even when I see that 40 I'm like man that should be in the teens and that's what I was about to say it's like I don't even see how she got in the 40% that's a lot these are the people that's wearing those rose colored glasses that I see it. exactly she's going to she'll do great no she should be in the teens yeah trust Trump more to handle the economy of and course. it's not even close of course 12 point difference there it should be higher there's no way margin bearer on the planet or it's even close all right, let's move forward with Ari Fleischer. He's been inside the White House, Fox News contributor, former White House press secretary. This is a tough day for everybody. And it, and it can be said at this point um, that we can remember the policies that didn't deliver this and we were in a, and we were in a, um, a pandemic, a coronavirus pandemic, and we didn't see this. Yeah, Harris, it's not just been a bad day. It's been about three days. This sell-off began on Thursday last week, and since then, the market's dropped 2,000 points. So it's down 1,000 today, but Thursday and Friday added to it. 5% hit, 5% drop in the stock market since Thursday last week. Now, three days does not a recession make, but it sure makes you keep your eye on whether or not we're heading into a recession. And if you're the incumbent, which Kamala Harris is, this is perilous. You want stability, you want peace instead of peace and stability. She's got two wars around the world, maybe more, and potentially a recession. Th this is very bad news for any incumbent. See, what's interesting, too, I wanted to point out is it's been prophesied that the market is going to completely smash. And basically, these are the signs. And they're going to what it is, what I believe it to be is it's going to get 
it's going to be it's so much worse that we don't see but they're not going to show it all until after the election is made and they're going to we shouldn't see the repercussions now of it going down but you you're not going to see the full effect of this until after the election right all right and and most importantly because i mean all the candidates and the race and all that aside this is bad news for american families for american workers um, sure. You you take a look at what happens when people don't they go to the mall, but they don't spend money. <laughs> That's part of the problem. Here. Shop. And so companies are starting to feel that I, I want to get to something that that former President Trump posted on his Truth Social just a short time ago this morning. Stock markets are crashing. Job numbers are terrible. We are headed into World War Three and we have two of the most incompetent a leaders shame. in history. He puts leaders in quotes, as you see. This is not good. Of course, there is a massive market downturn. Kamala is even worse than what he calls Crooked Joe. <laughs> Markets will never accept the radical left lunatic that destroyed San Francisco and California as a whole. Next move, the Great Depression of 2024. And that's you exactly what we're going to deal with, with unfortunately. Markets. Kamala crash. Your response. <sighs> Yeah, you know, I don't know that we're heading into World War III or the Great Dece uh, Depression, but we are in bad times. And I'm glad to see President Trump focus on that economic message that is the Democrat's <clears throat> great, greatest vulnerability. He may not know, and but we heard it. And this is an issue that has haunted previous presidents. When the economy goes south, when the market tanks, when fear of recession and the psychology of recession kicks in, mm. people start to sit on their money, which creates a cycle that makes a recession more likely. So uh, again, I don't like to panic over these things. We've all been around long enough to know markets go up and markets go down. We've been through previous significant drops in the market only to see them rebound and come back up. We don't know how this one is going to go, but certainly three months before an election, it is not good news for the incumbent. It's not good news, as you point out, for America. And it's also something that means Kamala Harris needs to take questions. She needs to let America see how she thinks about this. What does she think? Why isn't this heading toward a recession? What encouraging signs does she see? But she won't take questions. She you don't won't think expose so. the no. American people to her mind. Exactly. And that makes you wonder if it's because exactly. she's hiding, that she's not capable of showing what? how she thinks, how she operates Absolutely. in a spontaneous, extemporaneous way. That's Joe right. Biden couldn't do it. She won't do it. And that's a problem. Yep. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's as critical to hear from her. I know Hillary Vaughn said that, you know, there have been calls for her to speak today on this issue, as it is to have something to report to us that's good that she can do and that she's already begun doing. Because otherwise, it's just more words in a political campaign. And she's only been in it for a few days, but she's owned every piece of what we're living right now. Because as the president says, she's always the last person in the room when the big decisions are made and they affect us. Let's stay with the topic, though, of, of her record. The VP turned presumptive Democratic nominee is about to announce a vice presidential pick of her own. Could be as early as today, we don't know. Tomorrow, Kamala Harris is set to appear with her running mate, potentially, in Philadelphia. Her calendar has been packed with events just like the one set for tomorrow, carefully scripted. Critics say that's hmm. no way to convince Americans she's ready to be commander in chief. No. Harris has chatted with reporters, but still not done in depth interviews. Now, this is what Ari is just now telling us on this one topic of the uh, of the economy, but apparently not on anything. No news conference have we seen from her yet. Right. The pressure for her to face the press is growing. Watch mm -hmm. this. She hasn't answered a single question, not one single question by the media. Ed. She's only had one Ridiculous. single unscripted moment Thursday night at Andrews Air Force Base welcoming those hostages back. And she served up the kind of incomprehensible word salad for which she's become famous. <laughs> when she has to encounter the media, and I'm sure you're going to insist that she does, Kamala Harris has only been the nominee for two weeks and hasn't answered a single question. All right. Yeah, that is a heart of the issue. And the American people deserve to see where this new candidate stands and what she exactly. is capable of. But she's trying to run out the clock. That's right. And one of the reasons she's the trying clock, to run exactly. out the clock is because she knows and her staff knows that the American press corps will let her do so. Could you imagine if the White House press corps went into rebellion and demanded, where is she? How come she won't? And if all the stories are only about Harris won't take questions, Harris is hiding, as opposed to what she wants them to cover, that would mean the press corps taking Donald Trump's side. They'll mm. never do it.
do that, Harris. This is why the American media has broken down. It used to be, and it wasn't so long ago, that the press would pressure both parties mm -hmm. to do what's right, mm -hmm. do their job for the American people. But the last thing the American press corps will do is put pressure on Kamala Harris if it benefits Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So that's why she knows and her staff knows that they can get away with this. Look, A Republican couldn't get away with it. Are you kidding? No. If Trump had to leave the ticket and you put somebody else on, the press would kill that other candidate until they spoke. Harris, wow. it's a free pass. You know, there's one question today. How did Donald Trump know, and you didn't, hmm. Kamala Harris, about the economy? Hmm. You've been there the entire time. It's your turn, along with Biden. Uh, Ari Fleischer, you nailed it. Thank you. Hey, everyone. I'm uh, well, one thing that, that pops that, up. That's hold, the on, question. hold on, hold on. Let me, one thing that comes up, and I, I heard right there in my mind. And she's the true definition of an industry plant. They try to say this about music all the time, about this person with an industry plant. This woman is a litter one that y'all saw. <laughs> she didn't do anything to get to the level of where she is. Absolutely. And they just positioned her yep. where they wanted to be. Just slid her right on in. That's a, she's a true industry plant. She's the meaning. Whenever you Google industry plant, Kamala Harris should pop up on the screen. Yeah. Uh, well, obviously, she has avoided the press all this time. But, but now listening to him, they're not even putting any pressure on for her to face them, which is a shame, which is a shame. Industry plant. Which is a shame. Man, I t wow. thank God Trump going to get the presidency. Because um, I already, I, 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 me and you were talking today and I told you what I told you. And I said, but uh, I, but I know that it's going to be him. So. Yep. Well, but, that's why everybody is being vocal. We're speaking out. We're going to the polls. We're sharing content, relaying information, facts. You know, and that's what people have to base their decisions on. Facts and not feelings. If you put somebody in office and you know doggone well that they ain't capable of the job but but you know poof goes the usa just because you slid a black woman in knowing good and well she wasn't qualified well, shame on well. you shame on you you just as ignorant as she is yeah i mean bottom line i mean you can't say anything and, else. no and we're not really ignorant ignorant is not knowing stupid is knowing you still do so that's what that word you would well, be stupid, stupid. You'll be stupid. All the people that's stupid to me are the people that I'm with her. You know, absolutely. No, that's, that's just done. And then you got the facts right here. I'm well, where, her. where, where is she? Her. Where is she? Why has, hasn't she come out and said a, a word? Let me tell you how they used that. They played that so easily. They knew good and well Joe was at the end, even though they knew that Joe wanted to stay in his position. But he knew as well as they knew that they were going to position her to the front. And what they did was they got her in without having to do any work and at the top of the list. And she got more campaign time by them pushing her five months before he's out of that seat. Yeah. So I gave her way more time to word salad and to pander. And now she's going to start going for the middle class as what they're saying. And within the next couple of days, she's going to have a new campaign to protect the middle class. So well, your Democrats sitting in Iowa that's that 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 have the cornfields, she's trying to go after. She's going to start trying to go after them because just going after black and LGBT vote ain't enough. Not in this country. Well, they better wake up and smell the coffee. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. But it's obvious. It's obvious. Trump did the the National what, Association for Black Journalists conference. Where was she? She should have been up there too talking. She was supposed to come. Where was she? And She's trying to dodge that man left and right. Exactly. But the debate, you know, now she wants to... Now oh, she, she can't. She can't. She right. Did, she said she wasn't gonna go to Fox. No, she wasn't gonna do it on his terms. But the old debate was between him and Joe. So now you have a new candidate, a new person. You you no no longer have an an option and say it's it's a whole new terms being put in place. We're not going off the old terms. Why would you do that? Mm -mm. Now you have someone supposedly mentally capable and stable to respond and answer to appropriate questions mm -hmm. in front of people. Yeah, she says no. What does that mean? Please, you know what that means. I know what that she means. She can't handle it. She doesn't have the information to come naturally from her brain. She doesn't have it. And if she got up there and she start rattling off and she's in the midst of Trump and they're doing a debate, people are going, it's going to be so obvious. People are going to be like, what is this? He's going to eat her alive. And see, we know some of the, crit you know, some of the, the critiques that he needed to improve on from the last, the last debate. With Joe, the first one. But even in that debate, he gave facts. And people want to say he lied so many times. And ain't nobody get a proof of what the, he lied about. But yet, they show fact proof how many times Joe lied. Right. But yet, anyway, he still gave facts. He still talked about certain political issues. And yet, is she going to be able to do that? Is she going to be able to pull from her dome information to um, counter 
his claims or have some backup to support whatever she wants to stand on. No, because she don't have nothing to stand on. That's the point. And I no see, foundation. And, I, and one thing I That's wish, I really wish they do the Fox interview because it's going to, it will stir her up a little bit. And y'all will see she'll move out of her prepared speech into the fact is, is the fact, you know, kind of, kind of word salad. And she would completely get destroyed. I already told y'all Trump is going to be the president. I keep telling y'all. And today, hey, today affirmed it. I want to say but this if too. But that woman sit on stage and she go against Trump, it's going to look goofy. She going to have some strong points. And then after that, he's going to start hitting her with zingers and it <laughs> will be destroyed. It's not going to be. I. I doubt if she puts herself in that position. That's why she won't face him yet thus far. But I was going to say, you know, this isn't a bash Kamala bus here. Yeah, this it, is. For me, it is. Get okay, out of here. Well, I'm, I'm not about the bashing. I'm about. Go let's, on let's, get. let's talk to the let's talk to the facts and let's just be real about the situation. Just like we've been we said with Joe the whole time. We knew that. Things that he did in office were weren't right. We knew that he was breaking laws and it was alleged. It was proven. It was facts. Go out there and do the research. It's there. Allegedly, it's proven. It's there. You see all the information. He was bank statements, all these things that were proven. Yet he still remained in office. And then they started to see the public started to see the deterioration of his mind based off of his diagnoses. Yet behind closed doors, they've been saw that they been knew what was going on with him. But yet, finally, when we when people started noticing and zooming in to each live, uh, I was going to say performance, each live interview he did and him stumbling and not being able to keep his gate, you know, seeing his gate being out. I mean, it became very, very obvious. And finally, after people, after we, the people kept saying, wait a minute, this Hold ain't up. it. Wait a minute. What's going on? So, I mean, you know, it's about the facts here and making the best decision for this country. That that's what people should be standing on, regardless of the party, regardless of the race, regardless of the sex of the person. It should be the best candidate who can do the best job, even no matter who the person is. If it was Trump or somebody else, if it was Kamala or somebody else, you are going to want to go with the person who is the best candidate for the job. And you're not going to always agree with them, even if you support that side 100 percent. You're not going to. It's impossible. But there are going to be many points that you do agree with. And that's your person. I want to say, I will say this, and I'm going to go back to this. We have to stay. Everybody start zooming in from the, at the forest. Forget the tree. We got China, Russia, Iran. Home like the forest? We got, is we it got, on fire? <laughs> no. Yes, I know what you it, mean. Yes, but it yeah. is. We got, like, we got, from the forest. we have the, um, the stock market. We have, um, um, the civil wars that are starting to break out in these other countries, which will eventually make their way over on this side for things. And so go watch our live. We really need to pay attention go watch to. our yeah, live that we just, we just talked live. about. Y'all pay attention to this. Y'all pay attention to this. Cause I see they want everybody staring at this over here. While all this other stuff in the world is really starting to kick off and go high. And what it is, if you, um, Eventually, when the stuff in the world becomes too chaotic, you're not even going to see what's going on on the president side. You're going to see everything else because it's going to affect you deeply. So we really need to pay attention. Pay right. attention. Well, that's it. 2024, be more. We appreciate your support. Thank you, guys. Like this video. Share. Give us some feedback below. Love you. Talk less. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Yeah.